As we may know, acquiring an advanced skill in sports is difficult, which requires a huge number of practices. Players must overcome both physical difficulties and the dullness of repetitive training. Returning a fast spin shot in table tennis is a good example, as athletes need to judge the spin time and decide the racket posture within a second. Therefore, it's almost impossible for beginners to return. Well, in this paper, we try to ease the learning procedure of this specific skill using virtual reality. With the help of VR, it becomes possible to provide more information about the spin as well as to increase users' motivation. Some previous work already shows the potential of the VR sports training. The, at the VR ski coach, for example, shows a leading coach on the HMD to enhance the training on an indoor ski simulator. As for table tennis training, the Laplacian vision predicts the future ball trajectory from the current ball position in real time to enhance users' performance. The future point used deep learning method to predict users' landing point. However, these works only focus on simple straight shots and cannot handle fast spin shots. Next, Mitski will introduce what's special in our system. Before we move on to our final training system, I want to show you how we designed our prototype system. To prove the effect of the VR training, a VR system is built on top of the real world tennis, travel tennis system as a substitutional reality. The real-world system consists of a standard table tennis and a robot machine, and these overall cost over 4,000 US dollars. On the other hand, the VR system simulates the exact same serve of the robot training system, so the users can get the exact same view when they make the transition from playing in virtual world to actual table tennis by taking the headset off. In addition, we also built a VR system with temporal distortion which is used by a lot of other research, such as VR Kendama or VR Tennis. A pilot study is run to compare these three conditions to show the effect of VR training. This chart here shows the result of the pilot study, both training in virtual world and versus the robot, obtaining obtain a similar running rate of successful return, while the condition with the temporal slow motion is slightly better than the other two conditions. Also, from the interview after the study, we obtained some feedback that even though VR is much funnier to play with, lacking racket feedback as well as real surf motion make it less realistic than real training. So finally, based on the insights from the pilot study, we designed an improved version of the prototype. First, we include haptic feedback by adapting a vibrator on a ping pong racket. This vibrator is driven by an amplifier of which the waveform is pre-recorded by an acceleration sensor that is attached on the real racket. The recordings are then processed by the computer to reproduce linear haptic feedback. Also, we developed four new virtual conditions, including a baseline condition which only shows a pre-recorded surf motion. The other three conditions use three different uh, visual and temporal cues to provide different information to the user. Please see the following video. First, the spin arrow condition provides the simplest visualization of spin by showing arrows around the ball. Users can match the spin type with the surf motion intuitively. Second, inspired by some movies, we developed we develop the bullet time condition, which extremely distorts the time space, which gives users more time to react towards the spin. Lastly, we developed the virtual guidance condition as a more straightforward instruction which shows the future board trajectory and an optimal record motion in advance where the user can follow directly. Next, Erwin will tell you about how we evaluate the system as well as the final result of the evaluation. To study the effect of these different cues, we run a user experiment with 12 participants, of which most are beginners and the procedure is shown here. After a baseline, uh, real-world and virtual training, the participants are asked to train in shuffled uh, order of the three enhanced conditions to study the training effect. We also ask the same participants to come back three weeks later for another real-world match to find out the long-term effect of the VR training. So let's first check the quantitative result. We use two different metrics to evaluate the user's performance. This chart here shows the result of the mean table distance, where the table distance indicates the closest horizontal distance between the a returned ball and the table. Of course, when a shot is successfully returned to the opposite table here, the dist distance should be zero. Well, from the chart, we can tell there is a significant improve, uh, both during the three virtual training as well as the long-term result. While on, among the three, uh, the virtual guidance performs the best. So this here, chart here shows the result using the success rate metrics. 
Uh, to better represent the user skill, we also divide the failure into normal failure and the super failure by the table distance. This time, the results suggest the significant improvements in the same condition expect, except the bullet time. What's more, the long time result surprisingly outperforms all other results in terms of success rate. So lastly, we also conduct a qualitative questionnaire after the VR training. And this chart here shows the uh, result. The user are asked three questions in a six-point Likert scale about whether they have fun, whether they understand the spin better, and whether their skill is improved. It's obvious that in all the uh, questions, the participants are given a more positive answer towards the three enhanced conditions than the two baselines. So in conclusion, the results suggest that all VR training methods do have effect on training, which can also keep for long term. However, among the three, the quantitative result of the valid time, which used a temporal distortion, is slightly worse than the others. And in terms of the qualitative results, there are several participants who strongly disagree that the spin error condition can improve their skill, which is, however, contradicting the quantitative result. A more detailed discussion can be found in our paper. So overall, the system does have potential to become a pinpoint robot alternative, especially for its low cost and space free advantage. Also, under this pandemic situation, it might also become possible to do remote table tennis training uh, at home using like two of these systems. However, there are still plenty of future work to do, such as the wild and bulky haptic bracket and the optimization of the training parameters uh, and a comparison of the real world training. So, which we also discuss more detail in the paper. Okay, thanks for watching. And feel free to contact us for any questions.